Twilight was squeezing into her Nightmare Night costume as the first trick-or-treaters knocked on her door. After her Star Swirl the Bearded costume fiasco last year, she decided to go for a more subdued outfit. With a pair of glasses she borrowed a few weeks ago from Granny Smith and a white lab coat, she made herself a mad scientist with little trouble. It wasn't an especially original costume, but it was better than wearing the frilly things Rarity had tried to get her into. As she clipped her hair back into a conservative bun, the sound of fillies and colts singing for treats downstairs almost broke her heart. Yes, she and the others had decided that the Cutie Mark Crusaders would have to give up trick-or-treating for Nightmare Night as punishment for essentially stealing from her and Pinkie Pie both. Still, part of her thought it was a shame to take away such a fun activity, even from naughty fillies that didn't deserve it. Maybe she would let them collect just a little candy, so long as they weren't foolish enough to try and win that silly bet they made. Every pony should have a little candy at Nightmare Night after all. A commotion from downstairs almost made Twilight stab herself in the ear with a hairpin. She leaned over the railing to see Spike, dressed as a knight in shining armor, struggling with a hairy beast for possession of the candy dish. Pinkie Pie, are you crazy? yelled Twilight when she realized the monster had a smiling pink face sitting in the middle of its mouth. Nah, <laughs> I'm a puppy! Well, technically I guess I'm also hungry. Pinky, in her dog costume, looked down at the dazed and confused Spike, who was sitting with a half-empty candy dish. <laughs> Sorry, Spike. I guess I got a little carried away. Just trying to stay in character. <laughs> the character of a dog? asked Twilight. No, a puppy! grinned Pinkie Pie, wagging her tail back and forth, as if for emphasis. Hey, great tennis costume, Twilight! That will scare a few candy-chomping trick-or-treaters for sure! I'm a mad scientist, said Twilight, putting a hoof to her forehead. Her plan to go for a simpler costume had backfired on her already. Oh no, why are you mad? Is it because you've got a headache? Asked the pinky puppy, tilting her head to the side. Just then, a screech filled the night, followed by a cloud of dust that washed into the library. Spike, Twilight, Pinky, and the other trick-or-treaters all descended into coughing fits. What's going on? demanded Twilight between coughs. Before she knew it, two fillies were hugging her tight. She almost broke loose of their grasp, but stopped when she realized it was Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo. Both of them were shivering as if it were the middle of winter. Something had scared the daylights out of them. <laughs> oh, Twilight, it was horrible! said Sweetie Belle between sobs, starting and stopping. Pinkie Pie and Twilight did their best to calm the girls down as the other children decided now might be a good time to move on to other houses. It took a while, but slowly, what remained of the Cutie Mark Crusaders related what happened at Sweet Apple Lakers to Pinkie and Twilight. Neither pony understood what the fillies were talking about until Scootaloo told them about Apple Bloom's half-eaten head being hurled from inside the barn. Twilight couldn't help but have flashbacks to the story of the headless horse. Pinkie Pie, on the other hoof, seemed to grasp what was going on right away. I thought the book said if we took the candy to Nightmare Moon's statue, it would be purified. I mean, that's what the tradition is all about, right? All the puppyish playfulness had fled from the pink pony as she grabbed Twilight by her lab coat, desperate for some kind of confirmation. I don't know! That's what it sounded like this story meant to me! Ancient pony purification rituals aren't exactly something I'm well versed in! Part of her thought this must be some elaborate prank or some kind of trick for the trio to get out of their punishment. However, the look on the terrified Philly's faces told her otherwise. I just don't know, Pinky. I've studied magic. I just don't know, Pinky. I've studied magic, history, and science, but I never bothered with superstitions. I thought it was just stories made up by ponies trying to scare each other or explain phenomena they don't understand. I didn't think any of it was real. Why did you help me take the candy to the statue if you didn't think it would do anything? Demanded Pinky, starting to panic. I thought it would make you feel better, Twilight offered lamely. And it was a good excuse to confiscate the candy, she admitted, blushing as she said it. Uh, guys, what's going on? Asked Spike, completely lost as to what was going on. What's going on? screamed Pinkie Pie, rising slightly into the air before landing, huffing and puffing from how bad she was worked up. Spike just stared at her. Then, he started to laugh. 
<laughs> Good one, Pinky. You almost had me going. Spike wiped a tear of laughter from his eyes. Hey, Twilight, I'm gonna go get some more candy from the kitchen. Some pony cleaned me out. Calm down, Pinky. You're scaring the girls. Twilight hugged Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle tight to try and reassure them. She wished someone could reassure her. There's got to be a logical explanation for this. Sure, Twilight. Some pony chopped off Applebloom's head and did a ventriloquist act for the laughs. Pinkie Pie said bitterly. She shook her head at how stubborn her friend was being. I'm sorry, but we don't have time to sit here while you try to come up with an explanation that makes sense to you. We've got to warn every pony to get off the streets and lock their doors. Nightmare Night is back, for real, and we're the only ponies who can stop it. Pinkie Pie turned and ran out of the library, yelling at the top of her lungs for every pony to run for their lives. <laughs> Every pony she ran past just paused long enough to laugh and then went right back to whatever they were doing. It wasn't unusual to see Pinkie Pie running and screaming on Nightmare Night. What do we do, Twilight? Should we try to warn every pony like Pinkie? Asked Scootaloo, looking at the unicorn with soulful eyes. No, no pony would believe us given what night it is, said Twilight, despairing. But maybe if we could convince some pony in authority, like Mare Mare, I bet she could get the word out. Once every pony knows what's going on, I'm sure we can fix this. Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo smiled slightly. Somehow. Oh, my Celestia. I can't believe Daddy dropped us up here to trick or treat. Diamond Tiara was furious. It was bad enough Daddy was actually making her collect her own candy this year, always before he'd have one of his underlings do it for her. But tonight, he was making her go door to door at shops he did business with. These stupid little mom and pop shops were so cheap. They didn't even have real candy on offer. If they had anything at all, it was little lollipops or mints they had year round for ponies who were shopping with their foals. She almost felt like ripping off her fairy princess costume, wings and all, and marching home. Calm down, DT. It's only for a few hours, and then we can head back to our side of town like last year, said Silverspoon, trying to calm her down. She was also dressed as a fairy princess. However, Diamond Tiara had convinced her to leave her wings at home. They had been larger than Diamond Tiara's, and if she had to put up with trick-or-treating, she wasn't about to have her friend strutting around in a better costume than her. She let her keep her crown, though. Otherwise, how would any pony know they were both princesses? Then we can get all the candy we want put those three little blank blanks in their place. This is so tedious! Furious Philly wasn't willing to be comforted just yet. I mean, what was the point of getting Daddy to buy all that candy for us if we still have to go door to door? Let's just get this over with. Silver Spoon knocked at the door to Rarity's boutique. Many of the shops they'd been forced to visit so far had been closed, or some pony out front in a bad costume with a candy dish full of coupons. This was the first shop they'd actually had to knock at. They were about to turn and leave when a voice drifted from behind the door. Just one moment! Diamond Tiara stamped her hooves and gave a little groan, and Silver Spoon just shrugged. They waited. A chill breeze swirled a few wisps of fog along the mostly deserted street. It had been so empty before. It was mildly surprising when they noticed another filly skipping towards them, dodging and weaving between the poles of light from the street lamps. There was a sound of the laughter of children on the wind. Oh, great! Thought the snobby fillies as one. Company! The other trick-or-treater drew closer, giggling the entire way as she skipped up to the drive towards them. As she came into the half-light spilling from the windows of Barity's boutique, both fillies took an involuntary step backwards. The newcomer was covered in candy from her head to her hooves. Every last part of her had a shimmering, shining wrapper or a sparkly sugar coating. Even her mane and tail looked like they were made from red and black licorice. She came to stop just inches from Silver Spoon. She stared at her with wide eyes that were hidden behind some kind of lollipop swirl lenses. Nice costume, said Diamond Tiara sarcastically, expertly turning fear into unreasonable hatred in an instant. What are you supposed to be? A walking pile of garbage? The strange filly grinned, bearing large, sharp teeth. 
Each tooth had a yellow, orange, and white pattern of a candy corn. As her grin grew, her body seemed to grow to match her smile. She wasn't a filly. She was a full-grown pony. No, she was even bigger than that. She reared back on her hind hooves and suddenly reached out to grab them with front limbs that had magically sprouted claws. The long, sharp shards of what looked like peanut brittle snatched them up and dug deep into Silver Spoon's tender flesh as she was lifted into the air. Blood spurted all over her dress, ruining it as she shrieked from the pain. The wires of Diamond Tiara's wings spared her from this initial agony, at least. Unfortunately, that just meant that, as Silver Spoon cut herself deeper and deeper, writhing like a trapped animal, Diamond Tiara had an excellent view of what came next. The candy mare's grin grew so wide, it looked like it would split the top of her head. With a snicker that slithered over her face, her maw shifted, flowing from her head. The orifice traveled down her neck and over the length of her forelimb that held Silver Spoon's blood-drenched form. The teeth slid over Silver Spoon's skin like a bandsaw, gouging deep and bloody rivets into what little flesh remained undamaged, sending up a pink mist as bits of meat fell into the chips and pieces. The filly howled in pain and terror as she was literally eaten alive, the mouth opening and closing around the body as it gobbled her down a bit at a time. Finally, the candy mare's hoof swelled into a giant grin and swallowed Silver Spoon's torso and still screaming head. It sent a gush of blood dribbling over the beast's candy form while the mouth shrunk back and crushed the half-eaten filly like a grape. The mouth burped and grinned wide as the empty hoof was turned towards Diamond Tiara. Then... In the filly's own voice, the mouth said, A nice costume! Nice costume! Nice costume! Over and over, bloody claws twitching around the gore-soaked maw. Diamond Tiara tried to break the monster's grip, tried with all her might, knowing in her heart she was too young and rich to die. Laughing, a second mouth opened in the palm of her hoof that held her, taking several bites out of the unicorn's back as she struggled and squealed, blood gushing from her as it had from her friend. Something gave way, at last, and she dropped from the monster's grasp. She thought she had done it, gotten away, managed to slip from the blood-soaked wire that had become her fairy wings. She was about to run as fast as her hooves could carry her, when she noticed she wasn't standing on solid ground, but soft spongy licorice. The tendrils of candy wrapped around her like living things and coiled tightly around her little body. She could feel the ends probing and biting wounds into her back, the tendrils forcing their way under her skin. She could feel as each strand painfully slithered back and forth inside her flesh, moving deeper inside her, through muscle and down to bone. And the last moments before she was ripped to pieces, she couldn't help but think, the candy mare only laughed harder, dancing in the shower of viscera as she tore the filly apart above her head, gobbling up goblets of pony gore with many candy mouths opening and closing all over her body. Sorry that took so long, said Rarity as she opened the door. I just couldn't let myself be seen without the proper accessories and my spider silk chiffon wrap is so hard to see once you set it down. Rarity looked around at the scene on her front stoop. The spider ornament, clipped in her expertly styled mane, was particularly fetching. Oh my, I guess they lost interest. Too bad, I've got an entire bowl of marshmallow treats and so far nobody has had the patience to take one. Rarity frowned slightly. She noticed a single, beautifully wrapped piece of candy sitting on her stoop. Usually trick-or-treaters took candy, they didn't leave it. Still, it would be a shame to let it go to waste. Looking back and forth up the road, she grabbed the candy with her magic, then turned and went back inside. She couldn't see the lone trick-or-treater skipping merrily away in the thickening fog, nor the bloodstains that trailed behind her as the street lamps flickered off one by one. Ho, oh, Mare Mare! At last! I need to speak with you! Twilight Sparkle had to yell to be heard over the thumping bass. The Ponyville costume dance contest was in full swing, and the mare was sitting on the stage watching every pony dance. Twilight wished they hadn't gotten Vinyl Scratch, the famous DJ Palm 3, to MC for the celebration. The music was rattling the teeth in her skull, not to mention making it difficult to be heard. Good evening, Miss Sparkle! What a lovely dentist costume! 
said the mayor. She was dressed in the same clown outfit she wore last year, the rainbow wig hiding her hair, though her spectacles were still perched on her red clown nose. I'm not a... never mind. I have to speak with you. It's extremely urgent. Twilight leaned in as close as she could, both so she could be more easily heard and to keep anyone nearby from overhearing. Not that there was much risk of that. There's a killer on the loose and every pony needs to go home! What? Hollered back the mare, clearly not understanding, perhaps not even really hearing. Was her wig covering up her ears? I said! The unicorn took a deep breath and screamed. <gasps> The music chose that precise moment to end. Every pony on the dance floor stopped in mid-step and stared up at the stage where the mare and Twilight stood. The ponies who had been playing festival games, even the ones bobbing for apples, faces still dripping, stared as well. DJ Pone 3 herself pushed her glasses up, a stunned look in her rose-colored eyes. For her part, Mare Mare looked completely dumbfounded. That was until the first wave of laughter started in the audience. The more laughter, nervous at first, followed quickly by the mayor's own heartfelt goffles. Oh, Twilight, what a marvelous nightmare night prank! <laughs> Examined the clown mare between heartfelt laughs. Oh, it wouldn't be funny otherwise, but I don't think any pony expected it from you. Let's have a round of applause for Miss Sparkle. <laughs> the sound of stomping and laughter was thunderous as Twilight whirled back and forth trying to make some pony listen. Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo both were with her, shouting how it was true, how every pony had to listen. But the music had already restarted, and their voices, as well as Twilight's, were drowned out once more. They had missed their chance and ended up being dismissed just as Pinkie Pie had. It might have ended there. Twilight could have given up and gone home with her head hung low. Or perhaps she could have had a stroke of genius and sent word to the palace to Celestia or Luna to inform them about the terrible danger she feared they were in. Before any of those possibilities could come to pass, fog spilled into the center of town, dampening the light of the stars and choking the harvest moon. It crept in slowly at first, its tendrils muffling the distant, delighted screams of trick-or-treaters. As the mist sleeted through the crowd, every electric light on the string of pumpkins lights that decorated the dance floor died, one by one. When the music suddenly cut off, the silence was immediately filled by the sound of a disappointed and confused crowd. The full moon rode fat in the sky above, its glow suffusing the scene of the orange light. No pony heard the laughter at first. No pony, that is, but Twilight and the two fillies that had heard it before. It was quiet, but it had a way of worming into your soul. At last, there she was, standing just inside the thickest part of the mists, death smiling so happily. She seemed fit to burst. The candy mare grinned like a skull stripped of its flesh, her candy body glistening in the moonlight, already soaked from head to hoot in blood. Her mane, licorice whips, writhed like a nest of serpents. Sharp, jagged chunks of candy unsheathed all over her body like curling horns and claws. Tiny mouths opened and closed all over her form, issuing the sounds of childish mirth in a ceaseless babble. As the laughter seeped into every heart like ice water, it suddenly changed. Music returned to the town square as each tiny mouth sang in many voice. A new verse. Poison drowning all so many ways to take your life. By this point, even the dullest of the crowd had a good look at the mare made of candy. They took in the multiple mouths singing all over the creature's body, the blood-stained teeth and claws, and the look of pure madness in her candy eyes. It was almost enough to start a panic, but there were still those waiting for the joke. Nightmare Night had never been this frightening. Surely this was some kind of magic trick at play. A single tendril of licorice reached out and snatched up a cute little foal. Was his name Pipsqueak? With a flick of a candy claw, it was impossible to tell. 
His flesh was unzipped from his belly to his throat, and in a single swift motion, his hide was torn from his flesh, leaving only meat on his tiny bones as his guts splattered on the dance floor. He twitched and squealed in agony, feeling the cold autumn air stabbing him from all sides like knives. The brain inside his fragile skull went into blessed shock rather than deal with the pain. Fortunate, as the candy mare chose that moment to hold his dripping form over her eager mouth, she began by slowly sucking the meat off his bones, showing every sign of relishing the taste before worrying the tiny coil of intestines that spilled from his abdomen. At this point, a sufficiently large gathering stops from being a group of individuals and becomes a single, complex organism. Crowds are like that. A perfectly calm, rational being in other circumstances can become a frothing hate monger in the wrong company without ever really realizing it. Other times, an individual who would otherwise be outgoing in the life of the party can become Psalm and Morris in a gathering of mourning individuals. This effect varies in strength, of course. Sometimes the organism is lethargic. Others, it is almost painfully alert. A crowd can be slow to action, and then there are other times when the mood can switch in an instant. In this instant, the panic was immediate. An ancient fear gripped the crowd in talons of pure terror, and more than a little madness entered every eyes as they began to stampede. Ponies ran in every direction, trying futilely to get far away from the monster that had come into their midst as possible. They trampled over one another in their attempts to flee. As the decorations and festival stands were knocked over, more and more ponies became tangled up in the wreckage, or were literally crushed beneath the hooves of those who were trying to clamber over the prone forms. More and more of them became easy prey. From up on stage, Twilight could see many citizens were stomping one another to death in their struggle to escape from a fate that they never imagined. They killed one another in their eagerness to stay alive. It was a scene out of a nightmare as the creature with the candy corn grin went to work. A group of ponies found their heads forced down into the tubs for the apple bobbing. Licorice whips wrapping tight around their necks, their bodies spasmed and thrashed as they drowned, their hooves still on dry land. Others, less fortunate, were being corralled into mouths that gaped all over the candy mare by long arms of living candy covered with snipping and flashing claws. Some ponies were torn to pieces before being gobbled, while others were swallowed whole. The least fortunate were those who found themselves at the mercy of the whirring, saw-like structure of the candy corn teeth. Bits and pieces of their bodies littered the dance floor as they tried desperately to drag themselves away, abandoning their amputated limbs, some having only their torso for locomotion. It wasn't long until the blood didn't just smear the dance floor, but actively began to puddle, then to flood. All was confusion as ponies slipped and slid in the darkness and fog. Twilight turned to the mare. Mare Mare's face had gone pale beneath her makeup, and her eyes held the distant look of some pony in a trance. Perhaps she had been driven mad. There would be no help there. They didn't deserve this. The citizens of Ponyville, some pony had to stop this now. Twilight leapt from the stage, her horn blazing with magic that lit the scene from hell and violet hues. Stop right there, you monster! She yelled. I won't let you harm another pony! Her rage and desperation were tempered by shock. To her surprise, the candy mare had indeed ceased her slaughter upon hearing her words. Her living candy mane slithered back to hang lifelessly from her skull. Her claws retracted, and she visibly seemed to shrink. Even her mouth behaved, slithering back in place on her face, though it remained locked in a manic grin. Many ponies took advantage of the lull and the chaos to make their escape, while others were either too badly injured, stunned, or dead to move. A unicorn. The monster whispered in a single tiny voice, sharp teeth clipping each word. I used to love unicorns ever so much. They were glorious. They could do anything. I wanted to see them. I wanted to know them. I wanted to be like them. Was that remorse in that tiny voice? Yeah, I am. <laughs> 
With a gush of blood and madness from hundreds of tiny mouths, the candy mare's entire body morphed into a wall of claw-covered candy tendrils that surged toward Twilight Sparkle. Without a moment to spare, Twilight used her magic to fling a table in the oncoming creature's path. Smashed to splinters, the candy mare barely paused as she destroyed the impediment. However, Twilight had bought herself a few precious seconds to mount a better defense. The wave of death crashed against a magical bubble Twilight had hastily erected, the barrier blowing the questing tentacles individual pieces of candy. A single clawed arm pierced the magic shell, slicing open Twilight's cheek. But that was the extent of her injury before the arm exploded within the magical field. The monster roared in pain and outrage. Twilight merely lowered her horn and began to pick the creature apart bit by bit, tearing huge hunks of candy from the beast. The candy mare reeled from the attack, staggering back, trying to move out of range of the unicorn's spell. Twilight paused when she realized the monster was sobbing. Wings and tendrils sprouted from her form, ripping not at pony flesh, but at air and earth. The injured candy pony was actually trying to flee. Don't let it escape! If we don't stop it here, it will haunt the dark places of Equestria, growing stronger, and come back again next year! Some pony, any pony, use your magic to help me end her now! Vinyl Scratch was the first unicorn to join in the attack, her horn gleaming. Lyra, and a few other unicorns who were in the crowd, quickly followed suit. The candy mare rallied, sending another claw appendage to flay open one of Lyra's legs, but it didn't have enough force behind it to do any real damage. The unicorns focused their magic and began to blast and rip masses of sweets away. They were literally taking the candy pony apart, piece by piece, weakening her until all she could manage was to writhe in an angry ball. By the time it was over, there was almost nothing left of the once terrifying monster. As the fog began to clear and the stars once again graced the night sky, a small, still form shivered and pulsed among the scattered candies and pools of blood. This is the second time a unicorn is trying to kill me, croaked a voice just on the edge of hearing. The shriveled creature, Philly sized, chunks of candy falling from her body, rose to its hooves. He smelled a lot like you. This seemed to be addressed to Twilight herself. The candy mare's words quivered, but not with anger as one would expect. Rather, her voice had the real fear of a child at their core. One who should have been dead a long time ago. He had so much power. Sure, there's anything you couldn't do. But he didn't know how to use it. He didn't know how to make friends. All he knew how to do was take. So he took what he needed from others. The candy mare really did look just like a filly now. One that was nothing but skin and bones. Its face in shadow. Their friendship, their family, their lives. He just took and took and took and never gave. The candy filly moved in a series of jerks, as if she couldn't make her limbs obey anymore. The tenor of her voice changed. I learned to take as well. I did, and the first thing I took was his wretched life. I've been taking life after life after life for thousands of years. Only sleep. Even your princess and I could only put me to sleep. She couldn't stop me. Maybe you could do better. I have a question for you. All of you. What was left of her continued to shrivel and peel away, collapsing on itself. The candy mare lifted her face to twilight sparkle, little more than an empty-eyed skull, and grinned hugely as she hissed. Trick or treat. At the question, a wave of darkness lifted up the skull and sent it screaming through the air, trailing wisps of greenish fog behind it, aimed straight for twilight's face. She had no time to dodge or craft a counterspell. Closing her eyes against the maw of teeth that filled her vision, she braced herself for the pain of their bite. It was pain that never came. A sound like a flower pot being smashed into pieces echoed in her ears. As she opened her eyes, she found Pinkie Pie standing over the shattered skull. Apparently, at the last moment, she had leapt out and smashed the howling skull into the earth. Pinky ground one part beneath her hooves, gummy brains splattering her legs. So that part was made of sugar too. 
mused the pink pony absently. She's kind of like a piñata. Well, if a piñata could haunt the darkness for thousands of years and prey on the flesh of the living... She smiled grimly at Twilight. It's not over, you know. As she said this, Twilight could see that her friend spoke the truth. Bits of candy were rolling around the dance floor trying to reform. A hoof was taking shape here and an ear over there. Even the sugar skull was trying to piece itself back together, one fragment at a time. Pinky <sighs> took a deep breath, then exhaled before saying, There's only one way to get rid of candy on Nightmare Night. To Twilight's horror, Pinky put her head down in the mud and blood and started to eat, the candy crunching loudly between her teeth. But once she swallowed it down, the other bits of living candy seemed to slow. The other ponies joined in, Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle especially, eating up as much candy as they could find. Twilight felt a wave of refulsion as the pony ate sweets that still had bits of their friends stuck to them. Every pony seemed to understand that even most contaminated pieces had to be eaten if they were going to put a stop to the candy mare. Swallowing their gorge, Twilight found a piece of slightly less bloody soaked candy and did her best not to vomit as she joined in. The taste of blood and chocolate mixed disgustingly on her palate. As the fog cleared completely and the moon started to sink towards the horizon, the town square was filled with the sounds of ponies sobbing and eating.